Welcome back to part three of my living room makeover videos. My name is Jorge Firnu here, and I'm kind of taking my time with this living room transformation, bringing you along, sharing the details, uh, my thought process, and some of the DIYs. If you haven't seen part one and two, definitely go check them out so you can get up to date or get up to speed on what's happened. I did line wash the walls, really I'm loving them. It really has elevated the space and makes it feel, I don't know, just more interesting. Today we're gonna kind of, the video is gonna be maybe a little bit all over the place, but today I want to kind of just go in just on some of those like last minute, or not last minute, just final touches like, some DIY, some furniture that arrived, and the lighting. Yes, we're finally going to replace the ugly boob lights and put the new nice lights. I've so we'll do that. this before on the channel, but I'm using these clips. Um, you just like can clip them onto any curtain, have the rings. That kind of creates even spacing, almost looking like it was pleated. Um, so let me just go ahead and remove the tape so you can actually see what it looks like. crisp slightly hovering over the floor but that's all right since we're already here let's talk about the recliners sorry about the lighting and sun setting so I have my studio lights out but these are the recliner chairs that I got very mid-century modern and I think I well we probably had them for about two months they're faux leather and overall, I would give them probably a 9 out of 10, maybe 8 out of 10. Um, the reason I don't give it a 10 out of 10 is just the design. I still like feel like you can kind of tell it's like a recliner. But for a recliner, I think this is really great. And just a reminder, the recliners are um, just one of the things that my family wanted. Now, these, like I said, are the faux leather. They don't feel plasticky at all. They feel like pretty good quality. They're pushed back. Let me show you here. So that is the full reclining position. I did remove two of the springs from the bottom, which is easy to do. It has like instructions um, just so that it actually stays in the full, like in the third position. Cause they would like, the springs kept bringing it forward. Um, such an easy fix. So I'm thinking about putting a side table here. In fact, I did order one. But I was kind of thinking of maybe doing a DIY, kind of more like a pedestal um, as the white one that I've shown before. I feel like that could look really nice here. And also considering maybe like angling the chairs, that could look kind of interesting. Um, or maybe like putting them right up against each other and then like doing one, like the table on the side. I don't know, that's something to think about. Today is a very special day, an incredible day because we are going to get rid of, we are going to switch out this monstrosity, this monstrosity that has been cursing this household for years. <laughs> okay, I'm being dramatic, but I'm so excited to put up the new light fixture. It was a custom order, it took a couple of weeks to arrive, but so happy that it is here. It is sort of, it is this right here solid brass that has been sort of patinaed and these um these are actually not white they're kind of like a creamy color same thing with like the counter balls might be a little bit large for this space i could have ordered it maybe a little bit smaller but um we're just gonna work with it we're gonna keep the space very minimal anyways we're gonna make this we're gonna allow this to be sort of a sculptural piece um while being a light fixture so it's gonna go, of course, right here. So let me go actually go turn off the breaker because I don't want to die today. We have a new light fixture. Okay, now on to the entry. Let's replace this one finally. So the one that I got, I was going between two options. There was one that was very kind of 
modern, minimalist, just brass. Um, but I did get a nice floor lamp, vintage floor lamp that I kind of changed my mind and now I'm going with this. So this right here is very beautiful, mid-century style. And I really like the fact that the shades are white because there's this little element of brass here. And even inside, as you can see, there's a little bit of the brass. That's going to go well with the um, light switch covers. So it's just the key elements of brass. I, I love brass, but I don't want to overdo it. So I think this is going to look really nice. Ooh, also, it was actually pretty affordable. I think it was like two or three hundred. And I know that they also have like the black shade option, which if that's something you're looking for, um, I'll go ahead and link everything that I can below for you. And we have light. I do need to get some new light bulbs though, but there we go. One more thing. With the lampshades, I actually can turn them the other way around, but I feel like facing upwards looks a lot nicer. Let me show you the other way. So that's what it would look like with them facing down, but I just feel like I like them facing upward more and not see the light bulbs. You see? Like that. What do you think? Do you like them facing upward or down? Okay, one of the hardest things that I always, um, I guess, find most challenging is finding the right rug. I spent hours online trying to find the right rug for this space because I really wanted to incorporate the travertine table and make it work with everything else the new sofa which by the way the sofa um i did it did arrive i'm really loving it but i'm gonna share that in the final uh, living room tour video because i'm partnering with a brand but i think i found the right one and i really like more like natural neutral rugs that really don't stand out i wanted to not compete with the furniture the flooring so in this case i actually went with a cotton rug which let me show you i'm trying to capture this with the right lighting it looks kind of green on camera for some reason it's not green at all this is the one that i had before it's kind of more of a taupe color. Now this cotton rug is very nice. It reminds me of a jute rug, but jute rugs are just not the most comfortable rugs, especially if you're like walking with bare feet. I want something that is very comfortable and feels warm. And I think this one's gonna do it for us. As you can see in it, it has sort of these, I think the color they call, let me see, they call it, um, and I'll link it for you if you're looking for it, but beige cotton solid area rug. Um, it's not really beige, I think, but I do think it has elements of beige in them, a little bit more um, elements of brown, um, sort of that light brown, a little bit of like the medium brown in there. So I think that starts to pull in colors from like the credenza and the travertine table, the lime wash walls. It really works. So. I'm very happy with this, so I just need to actually order a rug pad for it. Um, excuse me, look at this chair that I ordered. I actually ordered two of the other ones on its way, but this is the Capital Cane Armchair by Treehouse, inspired by the Pierre Generette chair. Such an iconic chair. Look at this hand-woven rattan. It's so magnificent. Since I'm going to be using this as an office chair, I went ahead and ordered the optional cushion in the natural linen. I think this is going to make it a little bit more comfortable. So this is technically not sponsored, but I really like brands who care about people and care about the environment. And Treehouse does just that. They have this tree to house philosophy where it's kind of like the farm to table concept where the materials they use, as in with food, is only exceptional as where they come from and the hands who prepare it. So they source from local sustainable materials that collaborate with the most skilled artisans to bring this beautiful fine furniture as this. So one of the things that I really like about them is that they kind of cut out the middleman, quote unquote. And so that means the price point goes a lot lower. That makes it more accessible for us to purchase good quality furniture at an affordable price. So I actually reached out to them and they're gonna kindly give Gossip Refine subscribers 10% off your order. So use my code gossip refined i believe i'm going to double check but i will put everything in the description box for you to go check out go to their website go to their instagram because they are very transparent about where everything comes from who makes these things which is something that i really love let's talk about my work table so we are in the workspace now as you know sorry for the mess it's a work in progress we're getting there 
as you know, this has been my uh, work table for a while. It's a round dining table, pedestal table, which I actually really like having a round table for a few reasons. First of all, this space is not very large, so a round table is a good solution. And second, I just feel like a round table is good for a workspace. It just feels a little bit more collaborative. It feels more, I don't know, not so like a desk in a corner, kind of working sort of thing. It doesn't remind me of college, which is something that I don't miss. I like this. I think it's a good solution. It feels like maybe it's just a mental thing, but it really kind of inspires creativity because it's round. Maybe there's, I don't know, there's a meaning there beyond, but I really like a round table for that. However, I just want something a little bit modern and this is what I ordered. This is gonna look very nice with the chairs, let me tell you. Um, let's talk about the table for a moment. So I actually got this at Urban Outfitters. I'll link it down full, below for you, but this table um, is very nice. It's solid wood. And let me tell you, when you're looking for a solid wood pedestal table, round table that is this size, it's hard to come by for under $2,000, maybe even 1,500 US dollars. This one was about five or $600, it, to be fully transparent with you. It was on sale, I think it's on clearance to be honest, and I think they're gonna discontinue it very soon. So jump on it if you're looking for a table like this. Now, my only caveat, not caveat, my only concern was, and I knew this when I ordered it, was the color. It's definitely more reddish orange in color, which is not, um, something that I want for this space. So I'm actually going to stain it in a darker finish, but I'm not gonna go through the trouble of uh, stripping it down and all that. I'm actually gonna use gel stain and I'm gonna share that full um, transformation over on my website, gossiprefine.com. So make sure that you are subscribed there um, to my newsletter. I will send that out soon. And of course I will um, share that on my Instagram and here on the YouTube community tab. But of course you'll see it in the final living room reveal what it turns out like. Um, but I'm very happy with this table. The stain for it is arriving, I think today or tomorrow. Um, and then I can just get started on that, but very impressed with it. And I really like just the simplicity of it, the nice sort of fluting on the base. And I know I've seen a lot of DIYs out there done. In fact, I even came across a table like this at a thrift store many, many months ago. I kind of regret not jumping on board with it. It was like, $40. Um, but again, it happens. Um, and rather than DIY, I thought, let me just order it. And yeah, very excited. All right, next up, let's talk about the side table. Another side table. Let's do a DIY. Let's do a DIY. Okay, so for this space, let's make a modern, kind of like a pedestal side table for these two chairs right here. Just keeping it very simple, nothing too crazy. And I'm going to stain it the same color as the dining table, I believe, or the round table. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna make the pedestal, I guess side table, um, out of this plywood right here. This is, I think, birch, which I'm gonna be staining dark. Essentially what's gonna happen, I'm just gonna make a box, very simple. I had this cut, um, so this is 26 inches wide and this is four feet tall. So I'm just basically gonna cut it in half and then like cut it in half and then miter it and put together a box. So this is what it looks like. Um, these have been mitered as you can see here. Not, probably not the most perfect, but we'll make it work. I measured and I want these to be 20 inches Tall. So I'm going to go ahead and set the stop fence to 20 inches, which we're going to cut in half and then that will give us the other side and then we'll do a top. So I went ahead and taped everything up um, just to see how it fits. As you can see, things are nicely cut. It's not perfect, um, but I'm hoping with some glue and some clamps, the gap will close in a lot nicer. Um, and then I, of course, will fill this in with some wood filler as needed once the glue dries. But now for the top, again, I also went ahead and mitered the sides. So I'm going to miter the top. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Just cut the top 
Um, so as you can see the bottom, it's mitered as well. It's basically just the perfect square. Um, so let's go test it out and see how it fits. Ooh, look at that. That's very satisfying, honestly. Um, so it looks like it's gonna work. By the way, I think I'm gonna make a more in-depth blog post video, um, just sharing a little bit more detail on how to make this in case you wanna make this yourself. This would also look nice, like a taller one if you wanna get a tall pedestal. Um, so I will go ahead and put the link below if I get to it before this video. If not, stay tuned, gossiprefine.com. So I just thought up of a crazy idea. Um, what would happen if I just turn, rather than uh, gluing the top on there, what would happen if I turned this into like a storage box? So maybe we can use this to like put extra like throw blankets or things like that. So I want to allow this to sort of serve as a lid. And since it's, it's mitered, when you put it on there, it's going to look seamless and it's just going to look like a solid piece, but really it's a storage piece. So I need to figure out a way to add kind of like a knob to be able to lift this up without putting a knob. You know what I mean? Hmm. I think I figured it out. So let's assume like this is our front, right? So everything else is glued up. The top is not glued up. It's going to be our lid. We want to be able to lift this up to like, you know, grab the things, the thing we need. In the back, what I will do is I'm going to kind of cut out a little hole right here so that when you come to lift this up, you kind of have somewhere to put your finger and lift it up easily. Let's drill a hole. So here's the panel here. I went ahead and measured the center, which is right here. I'm going to draw a little notch, but let me just go ahead and start off with a small hole just to get started. I hope I don't regret this. This is our big one. Again, let's hope I don't regret this. Okay, there it is, right there. Sorry about the lighting. Uh, since this is going to be stained dark, I think it's going to disappear. And also, this is the back side, so we won't be able to see. But now it's much easier to kind of just put your finger there and lift this up. All right, let's glue this up. Okay, so everything is glued up. I use these ratcheting clamps to clamp everything together. These are perfect for like making photo frames or things like that. I'll link down below for you if you're looking to make your own. So we're going to leave this for a couple of hours and then we'll come back and do some staining. So I'm going to use this sustainable wood filler to fill in the gap into those and the little holes as well. Just use your finger. All right, there we have it. Uh, I do need to wait for the wood filler to dry before I can sand all this down and then we can move on to staining but the gel stain has still not arrived so i think we're just going to call it good for now for this project i will stain this once i stain the new round table um, and of course i will put together a blog post once that is done but pretty good little project so far i think this could easily be scaled up and down what have you all right so i think we can call it good for today's video thanks so much for watching i had fun sharing we're getting so much closer to that final living room tour it's giving me about two to three weeks probably to get that out of course i still have a couple things that table um it's going to take a little bit of a couple of days actually to get that finished and then of course i need to do some styling and 
those final touches as well as the nice final photography and the footage, which I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I wanna make sure that I get it nice and right. Let me know, do you want another like Style With Me video or something like that? I can gladly would do that for you. But either way, I'm really having fun with this. It's something that is so surreal. And I actually got a notification yesterday that it was my one year anniversary here on YouTube. It's amazing the community that we've grown here. I don't know how many videos I posted, but it's so fun. I'm still enjoying this and very looking forward to the next year, more content um, and things like that. And so I don't know when you're watching this, but if you're watching this as I'm posting, I hope you're having an awesome end of the year, a happy holidays if you celebrate and all of that. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Be sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed and check out these other videos that I think you might enjoy. But um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.